Hey Redcat Racers, this is Chris G with Redcat Racing and in this video we're going to do the slipper clutch upgrade install. And now the portal axle kit includes a slipper clutch upgrade with gearing change intended for the Everest Gen 7 and this is an optional upgrade. Uh, because of the additional gear reduction present in the portal axles, without a gearing change the Everest Gen 7's top speed will be reduced by about 50%. So when properly installed and adjusted, the slipper clutch will prevent drivetrain damage and should return the top speed of the vehicle to the stock levels. Now to accomplish this, you're going to need your Gen 7 with your newly installed portal axles. You're going to need your slipper clutch pouch of accessories and parts that comes in the actual portal axle upgrade kit. Uh, the manual will help out. We're going to use some wire cutters. You're going to use a pair of needle nose pliers and a flathead screwdriver may assist in certain tasks that you're going to conduct. Some hex fly drivers here, 2mm and 1.5, as well as some thread locker. You're going to need a 7mm and a 5.5mm socket or T-wrench. We're going to be using a bit driver with a 2mm bit to speed things up. Step one is remove the body. So pull the body clips off and remove the body itself. Step two is disconnect the motor from the ESC plugs and unplug the steering servo from the receiver's channel one spot. The side of the ESC and receiver tray has a slot where we can slide the servo wire back down through. So when you remove it, go ahead and slide that wire down to get it out of the way. And when unplugging the motor wires from the ESC, there's gonna be a wire fastener. Go ahead and cut that and Give these a pretty good pull. They're gonna be pretty snug, but they will come apart. A lot of people are scared to pull these, but go ahead and take those apart. Step three is unscrew the side link bolts holding the ESC receiver tray, center plate, and the links together. Once you have all four of the screws taken out, the center ESC and receiver tray can be completely disconnected from the vehicle itself. Step four, remove the center plate with motor and transmission. With the screws removed from the center plate, you should be able to Pry the chassis plates apart and the center plate, including the motor center transmission, should all slide out. Now you can take your Gen 7 chassis and set it aside. Step 5, remove the spur gear and the spur gear mounting plate and screws. We're going to use a 2mm hex and a screwdriver or a pair of pliers is going to help. So we have to remove the 7mm locking nut to get access to the spur gear. Once you've done that, remove the three screws holding the spur gear onto the spur gear plate. Spur gear itself should pop off pretty easily, however the plate is going to be pretty tight so you're going to need to use either the needle nose pliers or a screwdriver to probably get this off. Simply take the needle nose pliers and pry them between the plate itself and the motor mount plate and you should be able to pull that right off. There's going to be a washer and a spacer behind it. Set those aside because we're not going to use those. Step six is remove the pinion gear from the motor shaft. In this kit, we're going to change out the pinion and spur gear. So we need to remove this off the motor. 
Now if you have difficulty getting this off, it could have a little bit of Loctite on it, so if you need to, feel free to heat it up. Ours came out pretty easily. This is probably going to be pretty tight as well, so again, you can use either a pair of pliers or a flathead screwdriver and pry this off as well. Step seven, remove the drive shaft from the center transmission output shaft on the opposite side of the spur gear. The drive shaft needs to be removed. So we're gonna take a 1.5 millimeter hex drive and remove this. It could be tight as well, so be careful not to strip that out. This is probably going to be a little snug. This is where this flathead screwdriver comes in handy. I'm going to pry that loose a little bit and get this off. Step eight is open the transmission case. So the screw on the far side has a locking nut on it. We need to remove that. First, we're going to take the three screws that go through the center transmission and hold the motor mount plate on. take and remove the nut and bolt on the opposite side. Set these aside because you're going to use this still. The three screws that go through the center transmission are not going to be used, but the three spacers are. So set the motor aside, set the three spacers aside to be reused, but these three screws are not going to be used again. Once we have all the screws removed, we need to flip over the plate and remove the two countersunk screws out of the back side of the center transmission. Once you have those removed, you can split the center transmission to get access to the gears inside. Step nine is removing the original top shaft and replacing it with the new top shaft. So the top gear and shaft need to be removed because the slipper clutch is going to come with a new shaft that's going to allow to mount the new spur gear, all the washers, lock nut, things like that. And if you notice, the two shafts are actually different. There is a longer flat portion and the threading is longer. So the original pin is still going to be used. We're going to go ahead and use that and the original top gear. There's nothing changed. You just reinstall the pin and mount the gear on it. Put it back into the center transmission. Line everything up. Make sure everything spins freely and just fine. All the gears are meshed. Then we are going to go ahead and put the back plate back on the center transmission. Step 10, reinstall the back half of the transmission case with original screws and the nut and bottom countersunk screws. To secure this, go ahead and use the nut and bolt from the far side and put that in and it'll hold it together pretty well. We can tighten these down right now, make sure everything's secure. Then you can go ahead and flip the plate over and we're going to install the two countersunk screws. This way we do not forget them. Step 11, mount the motor plate onto the center transmission housing using the three new screws provided and the three original spacers that we set aside. 
So the portal axle upgrade kit parts for the slipper clutch is going to have three new screws that mount the motor plate onto the center transmission. You can actually tell the difference between the new ones and the old ones because the old ones are about two millimeters longer than the new ones. And this is so that they don't interfere with the actual slipper clutch itself. So if you put those into the center transmission and then you put the spacers on them, you can take the motor mount and line it up and then hand tighten those and they'll kind of seat themselves in and thread a little bit and then we can tighten them down afterwards. So tighten these by hand real quick. And once you have everything lined up, you can tighten everything down and the motor and motor mount will be in place. Step 12, install the new slipper clutch using the new spacer, the metal plates, the slipper pads, and the new spur gear, washers, and the lock nut. So these parts have to be installed in order. First you have the spacer, then the metal plate, then the slipper pad, the spur gear, second slipper pad, and the second metal plate, and then the five washers and the lock nut. So the new spacer is smaller than the old spacer to decrease the distance and pull in the metal, the first metal plate closer to the bearing. That way you can install the rest of the parts. With the spacer installed, we can put the first metal plate. Then we can install the first slipper pad the second slipper pad is going to go on the opposite side of the actual spur gear. Then the second metal plate. And then the five washers. And the five washers are concave. They're, they're kind of bowed or, or coned. They have to be installed in a specific order in order to act as the tension or spring uh, in order to increase or decrease the tension on the slipper clutch. So the first concave goes against the metal plate and the second one goes away and then you repeat that process vice versa. So the third one is going to go towards the plate, fourth one is going to go away from the plate and then the fifth and final one will go back towards the plate and this is going to create a sort of spring reaction between these washers. When you have them all installed you're going to be able to see the variance between the different washers and the directions that the uh, the concave goes. If you were to install these all the same direction they would just basically be washers they wouldn't act as a spring load whatsoever so now that we have them all installed and the lock nut on we can tighten this down and it's going to increase or decrease the tension on the slipper depending on how tight or how loose the lock nut is as you're experiencing different slip in the center transmission you can actually tighten or loosen this step 13 install the new pinion gear Now that we have the slipper clutch spur gear metal pads and slipper pads installed, we're going to go ahead and mount the new pinion gear. Now if you install this with the gear teeth outward, it actually doesn't make contact with the spur gear. It's, it's just off. So we actually have to flip the pinion gear and mount it the other direction. So we're going to flip the pinion gear around, that way the teeth line up with the slipper clutch. Leaving just enough space to put the locking grub screw in and use some thread locker on it to tighten it down. So get a little bit of thread locker here, not too much, a little bit's just fine.
and then we're going to tighten that down and it should be good to go step 14 reset the gear mesh so because we just changed the pinion and spur the gear mesh is most likely going to be off highly doubt that it's going to be in the proper location to be meshed well so we're going to need to reset that in order to do that all you need to do is loosen the motor by the two screws holding it onto the motor plate it's going to allow you to slide the motor uh, over and get that gear mesh set right there's a trick to setting gear mesh and in this particular case it's going to be helpful we take a little piece of paper put it between the teeth of the pinion and spur gear and press the gears together until they're pretty well seated once they're seated we can go ahead and retighten the screws to lock the motor in place and you should be able to rotate the spur gear and the paper will come out now, a lot of people can probably set gear mesh without having to use the piece of paper but if you've never done it or you just want to get a proper gear mesh feel free to use the paper trick everything spins freely step 15 reinstall the rear portion of the center drive shaft now that we have everything together, we're going to go ahead and put the rear portion of the center drive shaft back on. So line up the threaded hole with the hole on the output shaft of the center transmission. Use a little bit of thread locker to keep that in place so we don't lose it later. Take the 1.5 and the locking pin and thread that in. Step 16, remount the center plate ESC tray and outer links onto the chassis. So now we got everything all ready to go back into the chassis. So line everything up and we're going to go ahead and pop the center plate back in place. We'll just pry the chassis plates apart and put the pins on the side of the plate back into the holes that they were originally in. And then if you take and set the ESC and receiver tray on to the chassis and then thread the screws in, it's going to help. So we're going to run the, e the receiver wire for the servo back through the slot available. And we're going to hand tighten these screws in just to keep the ESC and receiver tray in place where we want it to be. We're just going to hand tighten these screws real quick to keep the ESC and receiver tray in place. Once we have those in, it helps to flip the chassis over. And because the axles are not completely in place yet, we can slide the drive shafts back together a lot easier. So just find the proper slots for the drive shaft channels, line everything up and put those in place. Once those are in place, you can take the outer links and put the screws into them one by one. And they're a lot easier to install this way. We're gonna repeat that process for the front. So the axle being able to tilt will give us the ability to line up the channels on the drive shaft, take the screws one by one and reinstall them into the axle links. Step 17, reconnect the steering servo plug into the receiver channel 1 and connect the motor wire to the ESC wires. Now that we have everything back together, we're going to go ahead and plug the servo back in. I want to keep in mind that the brown wire on the plug goes away from the sticker, where the yellow or orange wire is facing the sticker, and this goes into channel 1. Once we have that plugged in, we can go ahead and reconnect the motor wires. 
We're going to use a wire fastener once they are all plugged in. That's not necessary, but it definitely helps and keeps the chassis looking clean. We can take the wire cutters and cut the excess off and then we can tuck this wire set just the way it was before. Step 18, mount the body. Now that we're done installing everything, we're going to go ahead and mount the body back on so we can take our Gen 7 out and test our new slipper clutch. <laughs> 